Okay, let's take a look at flipping images. No, that's not quite what I meant. What I meant was horizontally tilting pictures. That's more like it. Right, clicking on this picture here, we're going to drag, we're going to drop it into slide position number one. If we double click, there it is. It's opened on the slide options dialog box. We're on the effects tab here. Now, the idea I've got is we're going to have this picture here. We're going to bring it through, we're going to twist it 180 degrees, but when we reach the 90 degree mark, we're going to change it for another picture using the horizontal tilt. But looking at this, it's just a little bit big to start off with. So we're going to drop down to Zoom X, we're going to click in the box here, and we're going to put in 75. So we're dropping it down to 75%. You'll notice Zoom Y has gone to exactly the same figure. That's because the two are linked. We can come up to keyframe number one, we can right click, we can choose copy. We can come to keyframe number two, we can right click, we can choose paste. You'll notice it drops it down to exactly the same size. So now the end position is exactly the same as the start position. Something else we need to take a look at. To do this sort of flipping image, within sort of the three second barrier, it's going to be a little bit on the tight side. So to give ourselves more room, we're going to drop down and we're going to click on the little watch here. When our little watch opens, we're going to change the on-screen time, the slide time there, to eight seconds. Put in eight in the box, click in OK to that. You'll now notice it's opened up. Right, let's make a start. We're going to come to keyframe number two. We're going to click on this. We're going to drag it in. We're going to place it so it comes to that area. That looks pretty good. We're on the three second marker point there. Right, coming in, bringing the cursor in. So it's on the five second marker. If we right click, we can choose insert. Now this has taken the keyframe from this position. It's copied exactly to keyframe number three. On keyframe number three, we're going to drop down to the horizontal tilt. We're going to put in 180. Right, so we've now flipped it by 180 degrees, which means if we click on the box here, you can see it's going to start to turn as soon as we hit keyframe number two. There it goes. Round it comes and it goes through and it's now flipped at 180 degrees and disappeared off the screen. Bring in the cursor to the end. If you right click, you can choose insert. That'll just ensure that the sort of the image is now on screen right the way throughout. The next important thing we need to do is come midway between the two. So in this case, it's going to be the four second marker. If I right click on this and choose insert, it's going to put in a keyframe. Now it's gone in exactly 90 degrees. Now the chances of that happening are usually for me pretty slim. So what you can do is you can come into the box and you can type in the figure manually and you need to put in 90. You'll notice as well that I've now got a tick in the box. So I've done something right today. If you just take a look, if you look at keyframe here, you'll notice all the boxes are ticked. Now we've put a keyframe between keyframe number two and what was keyframe number three. Now when you place a keyframe between two existing keyframes, it doesn't always become sort of, what's the word for it, sort of authorized, whatever the right word is for it. But by putting that in, the figure in, we've got a tick in the box there. We can tick these boxes as well manually so they don't feel left out. So there it is. So that's at the 90 degree mark, which now means when we come through there it is. This is where we're actually going to change slides at this position here. But as you can see at the moment, it's going right the way through the full 180. And there it is. The next thing I want to do to this is I want to come to adjustments. and I'm going to drop down and I'm going to click on shadow. And you're thinking, what? You've got a black background. But I have a cunning plan. Because everything we've just done, everything we've set up here, we're now going to duplicate, including all the keyframes, including the horizontal tilt, and including that drop shadow. So we're going to right click. We're going to choose a duplicate layer. I right clicked over this layer and going for duplicate layer. There it is, layer number two. All the settings we put on this has now been duplicated to layer number two. Let's move this to the side a little bit. I just want to see the images underneath here. I'm going to click on this image here. I'm going to drag it out. We're going to place it not underneath where you got that solid blue line or above where you got the solid blue line, but it has to go directly on top. So make sure that the whole layer turns to that light blue color, dropping it in. We have now replaced that layer, but we've taken all the settings that we've put in. So in other words, 
Now when we click down and we drag it around like this, it's going to come through and it's going to flip and... Oh, it's the same image. Right, next stage, click on layout number one. We need to come to keyframe number five. We're going to right click and we're going to choose delete. We're going to come to keyframe number four. We're going to right click. We're going to choose delete. So now when we come, when we come through like this, it's going to start to the art flip there. So that's where it's starting to flip. It's now going to change at keyframe number three. Through it goes. And there it is. A totally different picture. Let's just give it a quick try. Off it goes long its merry, merry way, through it goes and it will now play through to the end of the slide. Job nearly done. But we did that drop shadow. Coming across to the layers here, we're going to click on the plus symbol here. I'm going to go to add image or video. You can add an image or video. I'm going to select this image here and I'm going to click open. That has now opened it. It's placed it onto slide number one. But if we just drop down two, three, it's now on the background. You'll notice we've got the black areas either side. We're going to go to slide settings. We're going to drop down scaling. Fit to frame. Fill frame. That looks better. Let's go to effects. We're on keyframe number one. We're going to bring the blur and we're going to blur it by, let's take it up to, I know, uh, 10 looks pretty good. Yep. Right clicking. Copy. Come into slide number two, or should I say keyframe number two, right clicking, choosing paste. This has now blurred it at the end position by the exact the same amount. Fantastic or what? So let's take a look. You can see the drop shadow dying to get through there already. Let's just come and I'll tell you what, let's click OK. Let's just come and click play. This is now going to open it up. There it is, complete with drop shadow. It's going to be on screen. It's going to come through. It's going to flip around. And there it is. Job done. Looks pretty good. Go on, give it a try. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.